Welcome to the fifth video in the binary number series. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can deal with fractions in the binary system. To be able to do that, first we're going to talk a little bit more about the power definitions, and then we're going to extend the binary place value system. After that, I'm going to show you a couple of examples how you can convert binary fractions into decimal fractions, so let's extend or recap our knowledge about the powers. So we all remember that any number to the zero power by definition is always one. And if we talk about the negative powers, that is the same as one over the positive equivalent of the same power. So what does it mean for us? Let's have a look at some examples. So if we talk about 3 to the minus 4, that is just simply 1 over 3 to the 4. And if we talk about 2 to the minus 3, that is just simply 1 over 2 to the 3. Last example, 10 to the minus 2, that's the same as 1 over 10 to the power of 2. Now, why do we need to know the negative powers? Well, remember when we were talking about the decimal place value system, we talked about the smallest place value being 10 to the 0, and then 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4, etc. Now, when you look at the powers, the powers grow by 1 as we go from right to left. But what happens when we go from left to right? The powers decrease by 1. And then if you introduce the decimal point, you can further extend this place value table. So we can talk about 10 to the minus 1, because 0 less 1 is minus 1, then 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3, etc. Now, if we look at it with the number equivalents, this would be 1, this would be 10, 100, 1000, and 10,000. This way, this would be 1 over 10, this would be 1 over 100, because 10 to the power of 3 is 100, and it would be 1 over 1000. Now, it might be a bit more familiar if we look at this way. 1 over 10 is 0 0.1, 1 over 100 is 0 0.01, and 1 over 1000 is 0 0.001. So you might, depending on how you were uh, taught uh, about it, you either know this format or this format. Now why is it good for us? Well basically, when we start to talk about decimal numbers, we can talk about 3.42. But that basically means that I have three times ten to the zero plus four times ten to the minus one plus two times ten to the minus two. So the place values are built into the system. Let's look at how it differs when we talk about binary numbers. So the binary place value system, we started with 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, and so on. Now we can also introduce something new called the radix point, and then we can extend our knowledge of place values to the binary system. Because again, if you look at the powers grow from right to left and then by one, and then they decrease by one from left to right. So we can extend this to 2 to the minus 1, 2 to the minus 2, 2 to the minus 3, and so on, depending on how many digits you want. So, what are these numbers here? This is 1, this is 2, this is 4. This is it. This one you are quite familiar with by now. Now the radix point comes here. What is 2 to the minus 1? Well, that's 1 over 2. 1 is 2 to the minus 2. That's 1 over 4. 
And what is 2 to the minus 3? That's 1 over 8. Remember, 2 to the 2 is 4 and 2 to the 3 is 8. Now again, what we learned about the binary place value system is that if I go from right to left, the place values double. So you can see, you know, double of 1 is 2, double of 3 is 4, double of eight, 4 is 8, etc. Now if we go from left to right, the place values get halved. So half of 8 is 4, half of 4 is 2, half of 2 is 1. Now that's still true on the right hand side from the radix point because half of 1 is half, half of half is a quarter and half of quarter is an 8. If you can't really remember this or you have forgotten about it, try to draw them as fractions, as slices of pizza to convince yourself that this is how it works. And again, the double of an 8 is a quarter and the double of a quarter is a half because remember two quarters cancels down to a half and two eighths cancels down to one quarter. Now again in some cases you will need the fraction numbers but it's always a good thing to know what they look like as decimals so a half would always be a 0.5, quarter would be a 0 0.25 and an eight would be 0.125. Again, if you're halving 0.5, you get 0.25, and if you're halving 0.25, you got 0.125. If you're not sure, double check it with the calculator. So, why is it good for us? Let's look at a binary fraction. So, let's say I've got 1, 1, radix 0.1 in binary. Now, let's see what kind of decimal number is here. So anything that's on the left hand side from the radix point works like just ordinary binary numbers. So the place values here are 1 and 2 and on the right hand side from the radix point is the new system that we just introduced. So this place value is equivalent to a half. So what I've got here is I've got 1 times 2 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times a half. This is 2 plus 1, 3 and a half, which I can also write as 3.5. So that's the decimal equivalent of 1, 1, radix point 1. And listen, when you're reading out the binary equivalent, you don't say just simply point, you say radix point to make the difference, the distinction between binary and decimal fractions. Let's look at a different example and see how we can convert that binary fraction into its decimal equivalent. So our number in this case will be 1 radix point 1, 0, 1. I can again build up the binary place value table. So Here's the radix point. I will have 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, and so on on the left hand side. And I would have 2 to the minus 1, 2 to the minus 2, 2 to the minus 3 on the right hand side. The equivalents are 1, 2, 4, keep the point, half, a quarter, and an 8. Now when it comes to our binary number it's very important that you place them correctly. So the points have to line up. So the digits I'm using is 1 radix point 1 0 1. What it means to me I'm using one of the ones I'm using one of the halves and I'm using zero of the quarters and I'm using one of the eights. Again zero times anything just gonna give me zero and what I've got here is one plus a half plus an eight. So how am I adding together a half and an eight? Well whenever I'm adding fractions together I always need to make them the common denominator. So what's the common denominator of two and eight? Well eighths. So I know that a half is four eighths and the one eight is just one, uh, one eight. So I've got one 
plus 4 eighths plus 1 eighths all together makes 5 eighths. So 1 radix point 1, 0, 1 in binary is equivalent to 1 and 5 eighths in decimal. Now, if you want to convert the 5 eighths into decimal, and not just keep it as a fraction, what you need to do, you need to do the division. So 5 over 8 is the same as 5 divided by 8. So let's do the traditional division. 8 into 5 doesn't go, bring in the 0 and the point and borrow a 0. 8 into 50 goes 6 times, 6 times 8 is 48, so we've got a 2 remainder. Borrow a 0 again, 8 into 20 goes twice, 2 times 8 is 16, 4 remainder, bring in another 0, and 8 into 40 goes 5 times. That means that 5 over 8 is equal to 0 0.625. So that means that 1 and 5 eighths is also the same as 1.625. Really depends on if you're happy having the equivalent instructions or you want them as decimal fractions. Let's look at another example. So if I have got 1, 1, 1, radix point 1, 0, 0, 1. The binary place values, again, start with the point. I have 1, 2, 4. And I won't need any higher place values because I've only got three digits. And then I have a half a quarter, an eight, and a sixteen. And again, because I only have got four digits in here, I only need four place values in here. Now, let's put the corresponding digits under the place values. So, one, 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 radix point, one, zero, zero, one. So, what it means to us is that we have one times four, plus one times two, plus one times one plus 1 times a half plus 0 times a quarter plus 0 times an 8 plus 1 times a 16. Again, all the place values which carry zeros will not be taken into account. So we have got 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus a half plus a 16. Now the whole part of the number be 4 plus 2 plus 1, 7. And the fraction part of the number is a half and a 16. Again, to add them together, I need to make them into fractions with a common denominator. 16 will be a common denominator. So 1 over 16 plus a half breaking up into 16s is just 8 over a 16. You might remember that a half can always be represented with the numbers where the ratio top to bottom is 1 to 2. So anytime when a bottom part of a fraction is double of the top part of the fractions, that's always a half. So 1 8 16 plus 1 16 make 9 16. So it's 7 and 9 over 16. Now I'm going to spare you the long division in this case and I'm just going to pick up a calculator and calculate what this is equivalent to. So this will be 7.5625. Remember when you want to calculate the equivalent of it as a decimal fraction, you just need to divide 9 by 16. So 111.1001 one, one, one point one zero zero one in binary is equivalent to 7.5625. Six two five in decimal. I hope you now have an idea of how to convert binary fractions to decimal fractions and how the extended place value system works. In the following pages, you will have some practice questions and the answers will follow. So these are the practice questions. And here are the answers.